Greetings from Uncle Joey's Joint. It's Wednesday, the 4th of November. The joint is brought to you by Blue Chew. Guys, remember the days when you'd just fucking be standing there, the sun was out, and all of a sudden you'd start your dick fucking erupt in your pants. You couldn't wait to give your lady a fucking stab and make her fucking tap out. What happened to those days? Ah, time moves on. You pull hamstrings, things ain't the same. But if you got a weak wood, Uncle Joey's got the fix. Blue Chew, it's the first chewable dick pill. Same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. This isn't the horny goat weed you get from fucking, you know, the fucking high school dropout in the corner store. This is science. And right now, Blue Chew has a special offer for my listeners. Visit BlueChew.com. That's Blue, B-L-U-E, Chew.com, and get your first shipment free when you press code Joey. Just pay $5, and again, that's Blue, like the powder of your fucking helmet once you take one of these and you're ready to hit her in the head with that fucking hammer of a dick of yours. BlueChew.com, use code Joey, and we thank you for continuing to this, this sponsor the fucking Uncle Joey's joint. But just think of that blue fucking dick vein ready to fucking erupt. And hey, maybe you don't he need any fucking help. But listen, one gun is better than two. You know what I'm saying? So get your shit together. Go over to bluechew.com, enter code Joey, and it's just $5 for shipping. Again, that's Blue Chew. Dog, that's it. Use code Joey. Uncle Joey's joint is also brought to you by Lucy Nicotine Gum. I ran out of it. I like it. Listen, man, I haven't smoked in years. It's hard to fucking quit. And every once in a while, you just need a little pick-me-up after you smoke a number. And Lucy's Nicotine Gum is right there. Different flavors. The, 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 the fruit, fucking tremendous. So when you're craving a smoke, you just pop a little... Something to satisfy the habit. You step outside, you take a moment, you put it in your mouth, and you're as good as brand new tip-top Magoo. It's 2020. Things may be rough, but you don't need to be smoking anymore. And I'm telling you this from the bottom of my heart. Get Lucy today so you're prepared when you get the itch, and you're prepared on fucking New Year's Day with your bullshit. Wintergreen, cinnamon, and pomegranate. The best. I'm a pomegranate type of guy. Buy a pack of Lucy and keep it on you when the craving strikes. It might be when you least expect it. Lucy is discreet and you can take it anywhere, anywhere the fuck you want. This is the real deal. A subscription to Lucy comes directly to your door each month. It's so simple. You don't got to leave the house because Lucy has delivering down. I love fucking Lucy's. They always show up. Uncle Joey's. Listeners, go to Lucy.com right now. No, go to Lucy.co. Excuse me, Lucy.co. And use promo code Joey to get 20% off all your fucking products, including gum and lozenges. Who's taking care of you like me right now? Even unemployment ain't taking your calls, cocksuckers. But Lucy.co, use promo code church and check out. And I also got to give you this disclaimer. Warning, this product contains nicotine, Derived from tobacco. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. So is a finger up the ass. What are you going to do? <laughs> Go to Lucy.co and be sure to pro press promo code Joey on the way out. I want to thank Lucy Nicotine. And I want to thank Blue Chew for making your dick hard. Now, get ready for the show. I almost forgot the fucking candy. You know what I'm saying? I'm over here fucking around. Enjoy. Hey, how you doing? Come on in. Yeah, Joey's in the back. Hey, look who it is. What's happening? Check, one, two. Welcome to Uncle Joey's Joy.
What's happening, you bad motherfuckers? Wednesday, November 4th, whatever the fuck it is. Hopefully it's, uh, you know who, to, you're not going to know who won till fucking next week. So calm the fuck down, hold on to the American flag, and jump up and down at home. It's Wednesday, cocksuckers. It's a beautiful day to be alive. The 4th, is it the 4th? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I got a fucking doctor's appointment today at some time. I just got to double check. I'm going to get a call in 20 minutes. Where are you, Mr. Diaz? It's a great day. We're here. We're queer. I'm a little sorry about Sunday's podcast. Uh, I was a little off kilter. I uh, brought my personal business into the podcast. But I got to tell you something. That's what my podcast is about. To vent to you guys and to let you know what the fuck is going on in my world. And what I'm seeing as I'm walking these fucking streets. But we're good. We're feeling good. We're happy. Everything is there. The confusion is out. I took one more fucking step. There's no Uncle Vinny's this week. Because I don't know if people are hitting themselves in the head with bats tonight. Uh, Uncle Vinny's will resume on the 18th. Once the smoke clears and everybody's finished jumping up and down. If they even jumping down. I mean, they, they prepared these fucking cities up. They got everything boarded. In my world, you're telling me you fucking surrendered your city. You know, I'm a governor, I'm a senator, I'm putting National Guards, troops, helicopters, squats, squats, SWAT. <laughs> I'm getting them all in fucking buildings, and I'm letting people know we got no time to cause chaos. We got no time to hurt people more. We got no time to break into businesses and loot. People have heard enough. Let's get through this fucking election. Let's maintain our fucking balls as fucking Americans. And, uh... This will come back. This ain't just going to come. You know, people think, oh, I voted. Things are going to go back to normal. No, motherfucker. Just because you voted and you got that little sticker on your fucking T-shirt don't mean you just voted and you're going to change civilization. You got to change it from fucking within. You got to start with your fucking house and cleaning your fucking house because it's what really happens behind closed doors anyway, right? I mean, uh, you, you say little things behind closed doors to your wife. Behind closed doors, you fucking come on your wife's hand and made a smear on her face. So we all do different things behind our fucking doors. We have to start changing how we act and how we speak, even in our own homes. Because that's going to make you go out there. You know, all these people running for different things are talking about social inequality in our system. You know, systematic racism. It does exist. It does exist, and if you don't think it does, you're fucking... It exists in a mild way. But even in mild, heavy, medium, it exists. So, and at times, I've been part of the problem myself by cracking stupid jokes and fucking ha-has and he-he's and whatnot. We all got a good laugh out of it. But it's still a little bit on the systematic racism side. And uh, I've never gone through it, you know, whatever. I could I, I wipe my ass with racism. If you got something to say about my race, I really don't give two Frenchmen's fuck. But when we were living in LA, my wife heard a few things and it was disturbing to her. And if it disturbs her, that means it disturbs white people. That means white people would be in shock if they fucking heard what they had to hear at the school. But anyway, we're done with all that. I am very happy that you watched the documentary and I am happy that Dave, Bind, Mike Binder, put that documentary out for the world. I could have had a hundred critiques, but I have zero. I have none. Why? Because it told our story for us. It vindicated what we had been saying on the podcast for years, and it showed you of what we did have down there. It was a fucking clubhouse for boys and girls. We were free to do whatever the fuck we want. And I took more advantage of those freedoms than anybody. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing on stage today, because I take fucking chances. And who taught me how to take chances? The comedy store. If not, I'd go up there with an M up my ass and recite the same fucking 16 words for you every fucking night. You can do that at the store. And if you watch the last episode, they brought up what happened with me and how Binder said Joey Diaz Handled it fucking perfectly. Listen, you couldn't cancel me if your mother came back from the fucking grave. You know why? 
because I've told you everything there is to cancel me. There might be a few things here and there, but you're still not going to cancel me over them because they were done over 20 fucking years ago. And like we say, we change every seven years. So, so if you don't see that for what it is, I don't even want you watching the fucking podcast. Go do whatever the fuck you were doing. Go listen to Adam Carolla and jump up and down and buy into that shit. I'm selling you fucking real here. I'm selling you fucking truth here. And I'm telling you a little bit of funny from time to time. You know what I'm saying? As you can tell, my eyes are cleaned. No reefer. I got a little high last week with the fucking edibles. I went to a tremendous football party that I forgot to mention to you guys on Monday. I got so much on my plate. You know, I'm getting older. My long-term memory, I can remember who snorted 10 cut lines of coke in 1986. But I can't remember what I had for lunch on some days. So... I'm sorry. I went to a new... I've been going to this... Uh, the Florentines have a Sunday fucking football tradition. They got a few pizzas, some chicken wings, some shrimps. The main game is the Miami Dolphin game. That's when they go nuts. And they have a bunch of characters over there. Listen, it's not that no women are allowed. It's that no women would want to listen to that shit. Because it's a constant fucking... You know... That we talk about everything. We cover all the bases from politics to pussy to fucking racism. Everybody gets a smack in the face on those Sundays. You know what I'm saying? And it's in the funniest way and it's innocent as fuck. And it just reminds me of the people I grew up with. Like there was one point, I got the picture on my fucking phone that's hysterical. One of the guys that was there thought it would be funny. And when Jimmy went into the bathroom, he got outside the bathroom balls ass naked. Jimmy opens the door to expect like a room full of guys and here's a guy fucking naked. How much did we laugh? If that was to happen in LA, oh my God, call 911. No, it's not, all, not everything is a Louis C.K. type of fucking move. Some people just want to shock you with your dick. But when I told the dear friend of mine from the day before, he was like, well, you, that's where you got that shit from as a kid. Every neighborhood in Jersey had a guy that chased you with his balls or his dick out. You're looking at it. I started that shit early in front of Ashway's Deli when I was 16 fucking years old. I'm <clears throat> just whipping out my balls. Then when I got to the comedy store, it was the alternative. When you're not funny, you got to make it funny. If a fart is funny, make it funny. If pulling out your balls to close the set out is fucking funny... It's funny. That's what funny is. Whatever the fuck you put together and contrive. If you get on your floor and oh, spread your ass and put a lighter up your ass and start farting and those gastric flames come out and they go and people laugh. Hey, I'm sorry. It's fucking funny. When, uh, what's his name? Gallagher used to go up there with watermelons and smash them and fucking it would get into everybody's thing. Some people didn't agree with Gallagher's comedy. Like the guy said on the documentary, if you watch it today, it's pretty fucking brilliant because he controlled his own destiny. He didn't give a fuck if you got hit with a watermelon to the fucking face. That's just the way fucking life's, life is. And that's what the life of a stand-up is. And they really, really broke it down of what was going down there. And the most important thing that was going down there, it wasn't the drugs, it wasn't the drinking, it wasn't the sex. There was two things that were happening down there. That'll never, ever, ever come back in comedy for a while. The state of comedy was, we were on a level of 10 there. And the camaraderie we had there. Like they said, as soon as you walked out of the car, you were greeted by a doorman. You threw him a fucking tip. You walked into the bar. I didn't drink. You got a fucking water, right? You got yourself a little water. You mingled with two or three comics, said hello. You hadn't seen them. They told you about a club they were going to. You asked them how the owner was, if he's still a fucking cokehead. Should I cancel the week? And then you went back there and you proceeded to do either one of Sam Tripoli's rooms. You went to the original room, Jeremiah Boss Gang. Whatever his name is, Jeremiah Watkins ran a room upstairs. You know, it, it was just a, a time to be there. But it was also... A time to be there when they're describing the early beginning when there was nobody there. When Tupac had a shootout there one night when when they had metal detectors at the door. I mean, by the time I got there, there was no more metal detectors at the door.
But can you imagine metal detectors at a comedy club? What the fuck went wrong there? But then it lightened up over the years and I had an opportunity to get my education in comedy. Like Jimmy Schubert said, it really is a four year college. And it's not just a four year college where you major in one thing. You major in the art of comedy. Let's pretend you dated somebody at the store against Mitzi's wishes and you and that fucking woman broke up. He would make you follow her and she follow you for the rest of the two years. Was she playing games with you? Yeah, she was playing games with you. But she was also teaching you how to take an emotion out of comedy. You're about to shake the hand of a chick who just blew eight guys in a fucking uh, condo in Cincinnati. And you have to actually shake a hand, say, let's keep it going one more time for this woman and be a gentleman about it. You can't go up there and say, let's keep it going for the chick who cheated on me with eight different cocks. And now I got foam coming out of my mouth. I might not be able to perform for the next 15 minutes. Nobody says that. You're professional and that's what she taught you. She taught you professionalism, how to act. You know, Mitzi was a, a fucking character, man. Uh, Sunday nights up there, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know she was gonna tell me to grow a beard and come out as Fidel Castro next time. She wanted me to put handcuffs on and come out on stage like, an un, like a fucking prisoner who, you know, they even mentioned it in the fucking doc that she would say things from time to time that you would go, whoop, Mitzi's going deep. We won't talk to her no more. Hopefully by next Sunday, she'll forget she even brought that shit up. So that's what was great, you know. The uh, Carlos Mencia, Joe Rogan thing, at first, I didn't like that they tapped on it, but then we had a tap on it because it was a major point of the store. People turned, people got pissed, people's feelings got hurt, but it was a long time coming for Carlos. And I love Carlos. I have nothing, I have no ill will to Carlos. I've known Carlos since 1993. And uh, the joke lifting stuff followed him and it followed his reputation and it got to the point where it was a little out of control. And in my world, I had no ill will for Carlos, but so many people were angry at Carlos at the time. I'm like, guys, you, you're barking up the wrong tree. Just stab him at the comedy store. The comedy store has all those wings and all those fucking tunnels and shit like that. Stab him there. I, I don't fucking know what to tell you. I got surgery one night. I wasn't at the store. And that's when that whole thing went down with Carlos. One night, Joe Rogan was a hero. And three days later, he was a zero. And it wasn't right. I stopped going down out of solidarity. I had had enough of that place. Not to mention, uh, I didn't want the fucking town coordinator, one of the comics to go flying out the window. So I didn't need that in my life at the time. So we moved the fuck on. And in 2014, when that fucking shit had got fired, Adam called me like a man. He goes, I'd like for you to start coming down here. Took me about a week to think about it, to think about my loyalties and what was going on. And then I'm like, what loyalty? I'm a fucking comic. They're providing the stage. They're providing $15. And I got a chance to work at what, what I'd love. I mean, why not? At the best place in the fucking world, you know? The other day I was talking about the Netflix thing. And that was my biggest mistake for Netflix when I shot that special. I could have gone out there a fucking killer. But instead of going to the store every night, see, I, I thought that if I would travel and try my material on different people, I would see the results, how it affected different people. I don't need to uh, fucking find the result, how it affects different people. I have to make the material funny. And if I would have gone to the store six nights a week, Adam would have worked, let me work that 25 minute set till the end. I would have been a different fucking comic for that. But hey, hindsight is 2020. What are you gonna do? Now I'm trying to find my voice, which is, uh, whether trying to find it on the podcast, whether trying to find it in comedy, it's both the same. The Patreon is good. Uh, I have started, I've actually, you're not going to believe this because I know 
we're either going to get locked down or it's going to be a cold summer. I've actually started separating the chapters in the book. And I think I'm going to work out a deal with him where I'm just going to write a chapter and send him one every week and let him carve it up. And that's the best way to do. Start in November and go all the way to fucking, uh, you know, the first week of January, second week of January. There's not much going to be happening here. It's going to be cold. I'm not interested in doing any shows. I'm not interested in going out. I just, uh, in fact, I'm waiting for a COVID result, but it's been five days, so I've shown no symptoms. I could be, I could be <clears throat> asymptomatic, but uh, hopefully by the time I finish this podcast, I'll check my fucking hotmail and bam, that'll be my little result. You're negative and uh, we can move on to bigger and better things. Not that I'm going to go to a fucking a, a mosh pit and start jumping up and down and breathing on people. You know what I'm saying? Those motherfuckers. There's no more mosh pits, are there? Shit, that's the number one thing that got the, that and fucking midgets in the head. You know what I'm saying? Nobody wants COVID from getting in trouble with one of that shit. So I'm sure mosh pits are over. Live shows are over. What the fuck was I thinking? What kind of question is that? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, I couldn't fucking believe those mosh pits after a while. I had never partic participated in one. They came out after my fucking thing. But I tell you. It'd be nice to do a marsh pit with like nail boards to your legs. <laughs> so when you bump into people, you're like, here are my hands. I couldn't have stabbed you. And they're like, why the fuck am I bleeding from my leg? And meanwhile, you got like a strap of fucking nails popping up from everywhere. And ah, just an idea, people. You don't have to take this shit. It's just my thing of uh, having fun, having a good time. But like I said, this, this week I had a, a tough choice to, like I was like, well... Wow, the podcast isn't sounding how I liked it to sound. Well, we broke the third wall. We included Mike as much as we can and whatnot. And I got other ideas coming. I got some better ideas coming. We're going to stay in the studio. Hopefully we have our first Zoom guest tonight. And we could do a wraparound and have it for you Monday morning. We're going to start doing a couple Zoom guests. Just to, just to switch it up a little bit. Until we find the right combination. And once we find the right combination... We're off and running, bitches. I mean, right now, we're doing this a la fucking Apple. You know what I'm saying? Apple is responsible for everything except for the fucking hinges and whatnot. We're doing this with two iPhones. He's got a Big Mac. And this is just done from balls and heart. You know what I'm saying? We come in here and get a big crew and whatnot. What's the difference? All I'm trying to get the message across to you is that, listen, no matter what situation is going on in your life, you can wipe your fucking ass with it. You move forward. I've been in worse situations. This ain't shit. You know what I'm saying? For you motherfuckers who... I, I, I spoke to somebody yesterday. Like, I go, where you been all day? He goes, I've been trying to get online. Trying to get my unemployment. All these... Con I go, are you still waiting for fucking unemployment since March? That bank has dried the fuck up. I think they're sending out checks from time to time. But if you don't get unemployment by now, I mean... How many hours have you spent on unemployment on that fucking phone? How many hours have you spent on that computer? Could you imagine if you would have taken that, that time and done something in the positive? You'd have been three quarters of the way there. Fuck unemployment. They're not in business to answer the phone. They fucking pick, and you ever get picked up by them? They put the jingle music on, then it hangs up and you got to start all over after you've been on hold for 30 minutes. It's a system to fuck with you. That's why I can't always, I've always hated anything to do with bureaucracy. You just can't retire. You just can't wake up one day and go, you know what? Today's the day I'm, I'm fucking retiring. Oh, no. You got to go down to Social Security, provide this, provide that. Oh, you're only 57, so you got to wait till you're 60. And you, everything is fucking holding off fucking money. Stop holding off fucking money. It's our fucking money. What's the big fucking deal? We want it now. I got to sign 22 fucking pieces of paper just to get a small fucking 20. My friend said he had a, a gold bond that his grandmother gave him when he was like four. And he went to cash it and the FBI showed up. Like, what the? Are you fucking crazy? You paid 20 bucks for it in 1950. It's worth something today. Lay it on me. Do the fucking math. Take out your little fucking commission and let's do it. No. They gave him like a notebook of questions and answers. Where'd they buy it? I don't know. 
How the fuck do I know where they bought it? It was 19 fucking 60 when they fucking bought it. I'm thinking of cashing it in now for my fucking daughter. And now I got to play fucking Jeopardy with you cocksuckers about letting you know where and how and who. Here it is. How I got it, I don't fucking know. My grandmother gave you. want my grandmother's name? I'll give you my grandmother's name. Put it in there. My uncle, whoever the fuck gave it to you. They even give you a hard time about savings bonds. 20 years ago, they would save every other commercial, invest in the future, savings bonds. All of a sudden, they fucking stop. And I'm thinking to myself, these motherfuckers are going to pocket our fucking safety bond money. Thank God I kept like two of those motherfuckers. And recently, I said, let's see what the fuck's going on with them. Oh, my wife sent me a thing back. You got to fill out this whole questionnaire. When you got it, why you got it. Oh, I got it on my first communion. I don't fucking know when I got it. I just got it. That's all I fucking know, you know? If it ain't one thing, it's a fucking another. But here we are. Election week. Nobody knows nothing. People ain't spending a dime. Because we can't decide what the fuck we're going to spend. Either we're going to get hit with a tax bill. Or get hit with a bomb from China. We'll get hit with something. Don't think that it's fucking just going to be easy breezy here. From the walk on in. But listen. We prepared for this. None of this should fucking surprise you. I know half of you has followed my tune. Maybe you didn't. To stop watching the news. Forget about CNN. That's horror international. Between the Cuomo brothers and fucking uh, little dude with the blonde haircut. They're, 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 they're in business just to scare you. Just the tone of their fucking voices. You know, Anderson Cooper, he, you know. Anderson Cooper can't break an egg to make himself a sandwich, but he can put fear into your hearts like nobody I've ever fucking seen before in my life. So CNN is off. CNN's been off in my house for months. TV is off. I'm not even going to look at that. I know my wife, she's a fucking political peeker. She'll be up there looking at the computer. I, I, I don't know what's going on. I haven't looked at anything today. Then you hit her with a question and she becomes Johnny the Parrot. She won't shut the fuck up. You got to hit her one time to talk and two times to shut the fuck up. It's, it's it's amazing. But that's what I live with on a daily life. And my wife ain't, my daughter ain't no silent bird either. Jesus Christ, I forgot what I called her eight ball. I used to call her eight ball because it was always an unleashing. But I got to tell you something, guys. She has uh, come a long fucking way. You know, my wife took her yesterday at like 10 o'clock. Beautiful day in New Jersey yesterday. Ah, maybe in the high 40s, a little wind. But guess what? Vitamin D's dick was out. He's out there shining, just coming on you with vitamin D. What's the number one fucking thing they're telling you to take for this COVID? It's vitamin D. You could take some, get some, you know, externally from the sun. I got a rumor in this fucking house. I got a rule, and it, and it even goes for me. The rule is if it's sunny outside and there's no penguins, you're out of the house. Even if I sit on the balcony with a notebook, I'm always trying to absorb vitamin D. And I'll tell you why, because in two months, this neighborhood is going to be a fucking, uh, it's going to look like fucking Alaska. Because even if there's no snow on the ground, just the air is going to be petrified from the cold weather. You can tell. It doesn't take a genius. I'm no meteorologist. I, didn't, I don't wear a fancy suit. My name ain't Johnny Storm. But I will tell you that fucking it's going to be cold. And uh, there's not going to be no outside living. Uh, Patreon, you guys are probably going to love it because I'm going to send you tapes of me whacking off, taking shits, wiping my ass. It's going to be boring as fuck. I might as well video, video, video. What the fuck's the difference at this point? Hopefully if the numbers go down, we'll continue. We'll add a guest. You know, first we'll start with the fucking Zoom, work it into there. And if the numbers go down, listen, I got nothing against getting great uh, great guests on here. And I'm in a New York City area. I got the best guests in the world, my friends. My friends will tell you the other half to this fucking saga that we went through. You know, and it was a saga. It was funny because last night I had a hard time sleeping. Just me on my own, just, uh, I took my fucking melatonin, I took my fucking, uh, Kiki, Kiki Mo, Kikoko tincture, I smoked a joint of whatever fucking killed Dean Martin, 
And uh, what else did I take? That was it. By 11.30, I was tired. This daylight savings thing is, uh, you know, it, uh, you get a little tired. I had a great workout yesterday. I walked around with fucking mercy. I had a lot on my mind. I'm trying to take out what's not and what's not important. Uh, this thing, writing takes a lot out of you, especially when you're not a fucking writer. And uh, what was the fuck was I saying? I, I, I even forget what the fuck I was talking about. <laughs> And I, uh, who knows what I did. I just relaxed and I, uh, fucked up. Huh? Got fucked up. No, I didn't get fucked up this no. week too much. No, I've been good. Guys, I've been telling you that I've been good. Other times when I'm supposed to take an edible, like there's nights I'm like, wow, I didn't take an edible today. i tell you what I didn't have. I haven't been on that fucking Kalanapan shit and didn't make a difference in my world. I feel a lot better. I think that those pills were actually fucking inciting anxiety in me. Because I'll tell you what, I had a regular Americano cup of coffee this morning, not Americano with the hot water in it. Who the fucking throws hot water in that coffee? What's wrong with you? You're diluted. What type of pussy are you? Uh, that's the shit you find at Starbucks, which I haven't stepped foot in and I ain't planning on going back in there. Not when you got motherfucking Dunkin' Donuts in the area and they got that liquid fucking speed, that Arab juice. That's what Arabs drink instead of fucking, what's white people drink to, to get energy? Five hour energy or Red, Bull. or Red Bull. I had a Red Bull. Go fuck yourself. Why do you think these Arabs are nonstop? You, you ever go to a 7 Eleven at 8 in the morning, you come back at midnight, the same guy's there? What do you think he wants same to be there? Too. Fuck no. He's got nowhere else to go. He drank that fucking Brazilian bold. He can't sit down even if he wants to. That hemorrhoid will launch him. You understand me? As soon as he sits down, the hemorrhoid will launch right out of his ass. And that's the, that's the last time you'll see poor Habib at fucking Wawa or 7-Eleven. Mm -hmm. I'm digging the Wawas in Jersey. Jersey, shout out, you bad motherfuckers. Jersey's got a lot of great shit here. Jersey really does. Listen. I make a fucking right down the corner from my house and I got everything from Hobby Lobby to Bill's Wild Wings to fucking sun tanning places. It's like a whole new fucking world down here and it's on my fingertips, man. I don't have to go up north anymore. You know, uh, numbers are going up up north in big ways. Uh, we all knew this was going to happen with the flu. Once you incorporate the flu, I think the first person uh, tested positive for the flu and COVID. But again, you know what? I wear my mask. I do my social distancing. I wash my ass. I wash my balls. How about if you fucking touch your balls and you got COVID? Then you wash your hands. You don't know. Your nutsack's got COVID. Then you dip them in your girlfriend's mouth. Now she's coughing like three days fucking later. You know what I'm saying? She's not going to want to go to the doctor and say, I got COVID from sucking balls. So wipe everything. That's the great thing about fucking Manscaped. They have those little uh, pouches, the little nut wag. You put them in your wallet like an old condom. And if you're going to meet an encounter, if you feel that there's a bush and a woman is hiding in it and you want to have your helmet ready, whoop, beep, beep, you wipe the helmet off. She swallows fucking gold, no COVID, and everybody moves on happy. I don't even know how we got on this subject, but fuck it while we're on it. Wash your hands, social distance. And keep your fucking mask on. And if you don't want to put your mask on, I don't give a fuck either. I ain't mad at you. I don't get mad at the non-maskers or whatever. I don't give a fuck. Just don't come up to me and ask me for a fucking picture. And stay the fuck away from me. Because if you don't want to wear a mask six feet, you might as well stay 20 feet from me. And 20 feet from me means I can't hear whatever the fuck you're saying. Which is even better. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so do yourself a favor. You know, if you don't want to wear a mask, hey, this is America, Jack. You don't have to do nothing, they tell you. They tell you to lock it down. You don't want to lock it down. Don't lock it down. I don't give a fuck. I wouldn't get mad at you. I, I'm not here to pay your bills, and they're not here to pay your bills. You pay your fucking bills. I spoke to a guy the other day. He goes, if they lock it down again, I'm staying open. I'm buying fucking explosives, and I'm staying open. Good. You know, I don't give a fuck. I got nothing mad about you. As long as you wear a mask, allow three or four people in your store at one time, 
and you're not over here fucking, you know, fucking exposing the fucking COVID. I'm not mad at you. I'm not looking to shut down people's livelihoods. They shut down my livelihood. You don't see me upset. You don't see me crying. You haven't had a, a fucking beep out of me because I know when I come back, I'll come back that much better. Yeah. It's taken me a little while to find the voice. Podcast, stand up, but who gives a fuck? I know that if I keep showing up, you know, I could have told Mikey this morning, Mike, I didn't like Monday's podcast too much. I have to revamp it. I have to rewrite it. There's no revamping. There's no rewriting. There's no nothing. There is doing. You do. There's no, you know, if you, you, you ever go to like a trade school and you're like in the third year and they're doing the th same thing. Well, today we're going to put wire on the wall. You know, you know what? I really want my degree from here, but I really should be making twelve fifty a fucking hour because that's what I should be doing. I should, I really should be going for a fucking union job or something like that. It's the same thing. I've never been much for the fucking books to learn how to do something that you could do by doing. You don't teach a, a mechanic doesn't learn. Well, today they do because everything's electronic and connected to a fucking diagnostic fucking plug that goes in your car and tells you everything that they need to hear, what's weak, what's not. What about the guys from 30 years ago that would tell you to start your car and they would just put their ear and go, ah, it's a timing belt. You know, you're like, what the fuck? I didn't hear nothing. Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden they're selling you a fucking timing belt and your car's right. I believe those guys. I like by doing. I don't believe by fucking reading a book, 10 books. Last night, somebody asked me about stand-up comedy on Patreon. And I explained to him. I said, number one, you got to get Judy Carter's book. Just to see the basics. Just to see the basics. Number two, I want you to watch Stand Up 101. Bill Hicks, whatever he's got. George Carlin, whatever he's got. And Richard Pryor, whatever he's got. Put the notebook next to you. Take notes and see what you want. When you first begin comedy... Like when I first started the podcast, when I first started stand-up, you always emulate someone else. You emulate someone else until you find your fucking voice. It could take 10 episodes. It could take 10 times on stage. It could take, you know, ladies, how long was it till you started sucking a good dick? You didn't just were born and just became 18 and just grabbed that fucking knob and did it. At first, you were a little scared. It tasted funny. It needed pepper. You know, you didn't know what the fuck to think. Now you're 30. You're sucking dick like an amateur. You're just grabbing that fucking pipe and doing the same with us. When we went down on you the first time, we looked at that thing like, wow. What the fuck did I get in myself? This got like a little whistle. It's got a hole. It's got hair coming out from the, from the bottom like a little dragon. But then you lick it once. You lick it again. Then you meet the girl that tells you, do me a favor, stop. Open up that fucking monkey. Get that little, you see that little, little grape right there? Suck that motherfucker till it bursts. It ain't got no seeds in it. And bam, you became a better pussy eater. Nobody fucking becomes anything good overnight. And, you know, I was a little down on myself Tuesday about the morning podcast. I rattled. I was all over the place. No more, guys. We're going to keep tightening this shit up. And hopefully, by next Monday morning, we'll have our first fucking Zoom guest. And then we'll start adding Zoom. And hopefully, as, as the numbers go down, we'll get another camera, another mic. Because I know what the answer is to this podcast. I already know what the answer is. I'm not going to tell you what it is. But I already know what the answer is to this podcast. It's just a cunt hair away. And we're going to fucking put it together together. Together, just to come tear away like Mike just did. <laughs> and let's say, you know, women's hair, little puss, they have that little Chinese hair. Me, you go for one of my ball hairs, it's gray. You're going to need like a tug of fucking, you're going to need like three, three American, these Iraqi soldiers to pull fucking gray hair out of my dick. It's like the ones on my eyebrows. I trim the other ones. They go, zzz. when they hit the fucking white hair, it goes, zzz, zzz, zzz. those are the fucking cords of life. That's 57 years of sperm, bubble gum, bad weather, stress, whatever the fuck you want to call it, you <laughs> bad motherfuckers. But we're here with Queer. If you're on Patreon, I hope you're enjoying the album of the week. 
I'm not giving you albums that you want to hear. I'm giving you the albums that influenced me to make me who I am, the fucking motherfucker today that's doing podcasts in front of a fucking iPhone. Who's better than me? I got two iPhones here. We're making it fucking work for you, all right? Everybody else is sitting there, well, we need 330000 to get the studio going. Yeah, but you got Kelly Clarkson there. Have you watched Kelly Clarkson's daytime show? Don't get a rope yet. Oh, my fucking God. And I love Kelly Clarkson. She got a great voice. I cheered for her on fucking that show when she was on. They gave her a daytime show. Why are you giving these singers daytime shows? They're, they, she had Usher on the day I watched her. She was asking creepy questions. By now, the show is over. You could tell Usher didn't want to be there. Usher would much, much rather be at a fucking funeral dancing and singing or whatever the fuck they do. You know, Usher didn't want to be there. How is your show going to be in Vegas of 2021, bitch? I haven't even gotten a COVID test yet. And you're asking me about 2021. What the fuck is wrong with these people? But little by little, you guys are seeing who are the masters of your fucking reality. It's the Burrs. It's the Rogans. It's the Tim Dillons. It's the fucking, uh, you know, Whitney Cummings. All these people's podcasts influence you. They open up their hearts for you. They open up their minds for you. And now as comedians and not as fucking, you know, you got all these guys that sit there and watch videos. And they criticize Whitney and criticize these people and this people. Bro, you know what? We did something you'll never do. You're probably some trust fund kid. You tried stand up, didn't work out for you. You tried a couple of other things. Now you and some of your partners get together and chop down stand ups for what we say, whatever. Listen, all you need to do is watch the Comedy Store documentary. That was a journey for the most of us. The other night, if you're on my Patreon, I posted a schedule from 1998. That's 22 years ago. Any of you motherfuckers still doing the same thing you were doing 22 years ago? Mm -hmm. I doubt it. And I was already six years in, maybe six or seven years in. So before you put on your little fucking stupid video and think that you're the shit, you're nothing but a trust fund little fucking cunt that at fucking private school, they would all fuck you in the ass and giggle at you. Now you got a few dollars. Your grandmother died, that fucking jerk off. She's probably sucking dicks in hell and she left you a little money and now you got the right to sit there all day and talk about people. I wish I had that fucking right, you know what I'm saying? But the good thing about us is we have something to back that up with and you'll never have that in your fucking life. None of you is that think that's cute of putting Whitney down or Chino Santino or Bobby Lee. We did something. We committed to something. You committed to the fucking low road by sitting there and saying things and thinking that you're fucking cool. And then you expect to walk around the rest of your life that this isn't going to come back and bite you in the ass, my friend. My friend, you have no fucking idea how life comes back. You don't need to go after people, you know. I don't need to wish wrong on people. I, I really don't. At this age, it's just giving people a rope and wait till they fucking hang themselves. It's a beautiful thing to watch because I don't know what the fucking point of what you're doing is. We're all fucking made guys. We all fucking did something, you know. I didn't win an Academy Award and I didn't set out to do it. I didn't win a fucking Grammy or an Emmy, but I didn't set out to do it. All I wanted to do is be a part of something. For some people, it's Nexium. You go up there and get your your little pussy fucked by a four-eyed fucking worm. That cocksucker. I've been watching that too. How stupid are you to join Nexium? You what, what? What happened? They threw you out of Scientology. You dumb fucks. What is wrong with you fucking people? What is the hole in your heart? that you want to get together with a bunch of fucking strangers, jump up and down, and give some fucking guy a bunch of your fucking money to learn basic life classes. What the fuck were your parents there for? For what? To just talk to you and incur? <laughs> you got a fucking trophy. You came in 12th. What the fuck do you care? If I come in 12th in my house, my mother takes that trophy and shoves it up my ass. And sex next time, you better come in 9th. And the next time, you better come in 8th. 
And the next time you better come in fourth, the next time you come in fucking first. What type of parent are you that your fucking kid has a void that joins Nexium, Scientology, fucking, uh, the fucking, uh, the cult of yoga with that stinky fucking hummus eater with a little fucking, he, had, he basically wore a face mask like we're wearing now on his nutsack and touch you and fucking, uh, taught yoga to these poor fucking people in, in Los Angeles. And that just goes to show you all that Nexium and all that Scientologist and all that fucking creepy yoga. Where is the center of all that? In Weaknessville, Los Angeles, California. I love you and you're great. And uh, you guys did great for my career. And I had a great time while I was there, but I was surrounded by those people. And that's a different fucking way of being, what's the word we're looking for? Not degenerate, but not greedy, but, uh, you know, I forget that fucking word constantly, but what are you going to fucking do? That guy's still out in Europe no. doing that shit, too. Uh, what? What's his name? He's still out in Europe doing that yoga shit. Yeah, no, he he, he's, in yoga. he's in Mexico now, <laughs> that motherfucking Big Rom, and nobody will go get him. I'm hoping one of you fucking white parents will go down there and beat the fuck out of him, drag him back by the ponytail, and put him in fucking America doing that shit. To the, he had 800, 900 people, but that's what people in LA do. They take that little weak spot you have and they fucking exploit it, whether it's Scientology. I mean, you gotta watch the one, but next one by Catherine Oxenberg's daughter. Funny thing was, I did a movie with Catherine Oxenberg and her husband from uh, Space, what's the name of that show? Whatever, some movie that came out that fucking white America loved. I love it with basketball. Great. Uh, <laughs> space to some, to, so who the fuck gives a fuck? And Catherine was very nice. I did one of those Disney dog Halloween movies with her or something. And, and she was spectacular. And I'm sure the girls were there as young girls. I just didn't really get to know them. But it makes you think as a parent, what fucking voids do I have to fill in my kid so they don't end up in Nexium fucking listening to some four-eyed fucking faggot Tell them stories about, you know, your next level in life. Your next level in life, the only one that's going to take you there is you. I'm going to pay you $18,000 and go to Albany and fucking freeze. There's not even Chinese food in Albany. No disrespect, but you got nothing up there in Albany. But cold weather, Lee was up there for two days. He was like, oh, my God. Ah. Yeah, anyway. But uh, <laughs> if you get a chance, watch the next thing and fucking disgust parade, you know, nothing, nothing new to the Harveys, nothing new to all the other shit that goes on out there. And, uh, that's also been an interesting thing to watch because as a parent, you got to look and say, wow, what fucking hole did I leave in my child's heart for them to hang out with a bunch of fucking jerk offs. I had a friend in LA, great fucking friend. She used to, uh, the desperation. That's what makes you do this shit. She had a business house. Forget I love her to death. I've been friends with her for over 20 years. We all met through Ralphie May. But she had a thing called where, like, you would put, like, a vacation destination up, Greece. And all these strangers would sign up. And you'd have to go to Greece with 20 strangers in a book, in, on a plane. And she would take pictures and send them back to me. And I'm like, those are the loneliest motherfucking people I have ever seen in my life that they got to take a fucking plane to meet with people. But then again, maybe they're social misfits. Maybe they're not well socially. Maybe they just really want to meet. You know, there's people out there that really, I want to meet new and adventurous people. Give me a fucking break. Okay, you want to meet an adventure guy? Go down and talk to the guy who runs the bodega. He's got stories of life that you never fucking heard before. You know, it, it, it's just so weird coming from L.A. and remembering all the things. Like, I had a friend in uh, about 2004, married chick, straight up. You know, I respected her with all my heart. She had uh, picked up a show. She had done one of my one of the shows I was on, Cold Case, and she was picked from a, a showcase. They did a showcase up at the theater and the producers from Cold Case were there and they used her for the episode. Mind you, 
She never had a credit before that. And I think she never got a credit after that. But she took that episode, a cold case, and ran with it and gave it to the Latinos Association. And they voted it as one of the best episodes on CBS. And CBS got an accolade for fucking, uh, for, uh, you know, having Latinos on and whatnot. And, but what I didn't know at the time was that this girl was happily married with kids and she was having an affair with a, a producer that at the time was, and we'll close with this. I know you guys have things to do and people to see. She was fucking a guy on the side that was a little producer. He was starting to get some steam you know, my my friend that was with him was around 37, married, nice body, really pretty girl. The producer was around 40. But if you know anything about those disgusting people in L.A., they're always trying to nail the 21, 22-year-olds as they get off the bus to fucking start them. They try to fill them with sperm and throw their head off for a while. And, uh, well, guess what happened? While he was dating my friend, he embarked and one of the biggest franchises in the world. Think of franchises of movies. I'm not gonna give you a name, but think of huge franchises. I'm talking Rambo franchises. I'm talking the fucking little white perverts that were biting each other in the neck. Twilight, whatever the <laughs> fuck it is. Those little fucking fags. Whatever happened to them all, the one guy's gonna play Batman. You know, there were, there were these franchises. Well, that medium range producer banged into one of those franchises. One of those 800 million overseas type movie. And my homegirl got, that's when she came to me and she goes, I don't know if you know this, I've been fucking and sucking his dick for a year cheating on my husband, me. You know, I'm from the world of drugs I don't mind getting hit in the head with a bat from time to time. But that world about cheating on your husband, I didn't know what the fuck she was talking about. And I played it off and she's like, I told that motherfucker, even either he gives me a house or I tell his new 21 year old girlfriend, because yeah, who, who wants a 37 year old when you got a 21 year old blonde, stupid, you know. And I'm not talking for me. I'm talking for these fucking producers. That's how they, that's their motorandum, whatever the fuck they do. They just get rid of it. But the 37-year-old girl was a Spanish girl, and she gave him a hard time. She's like, I ain't going nowhere, motherfucker. I got used condoms. I got sperm on my dresses. I'm like Lewinsky. I got everything. So this guy had to give her his house. He had like a house on cold water that he used for camera equipment. You know, he had like little things there. He had a great view and different angles. So he would shoot different things up there and shit. They had to settle by her getting the house from him. And the husband never found out. His wife never found out. It was just a clean transaction. I just thought about this the other day. And I would go up there and put auditions on tape. That's where I got American Gangster. That's how I got Taxi. That's how I got maybe seven movies was through this girl that got this all this equipment to this guy she was fucking. He nails the biggest franchise in fucking movie history and he just gives her the house up in Coldwater Canyon. House had to be worth a million dollars. The equipment, another 200,000. So that's all you know about my life and where I've been and the things I've seen. No names. No fucking names, never. Uh, it's Wednesday afternoon. I hope you're feeling well. I hope that whoever you voted for, you know, works out for you. For me, I told you, I'm not voting. I worry about the fucking guy. I'm voting for the guy who lets me stay home, scratch my ball, sniff a finger, take a picture of my fingers with a pubic hair on it, send it to you and still sends me a check at the end of the week. That's who I'm voting for. Uh, I hope they vote. Uh, New Jersey, you better fucking vote marijuana in. We need this Gitas. It's a lot of Gitas, 
And it's a lot of gitas if it's run right. You understand me? If it's run right, marijuana is great. You don't believe me? Ask Denver. They've got it down to a fucking science and a fucking nickel. L.A., ugh, you know, they don't know what the fuck. They, they, they've never told you what they did with the money. Oh, we spend it on rehabs, yeah? Then why are all these people over here in fucking huts, you fucking cocksuckers? <laughs> you know, put them in fucking apartment buildings. Do something with this weed money. We know you make tons of it, so. I love you motherfuckers. I'm never here to take too much of your time. I just want to check in with you. You got plenty of me to go around. You got two fucking mini podcasts on Patreon. You got fucking uh, album of the week on Patreon. You got morning motivation. I drop some fucking uh, periscopes on Twitter for you from time to time. I'm still on Facebook. I'm at Uncle Vinny's the 18th and the 25th. Jimmy Florentine is there this weekend, the 6th and the 7th. I might go down one of the nights and say hello. And then that's it and that's that. We're trying to put it together. I got a show coming out on Ozzy's Boneyard this month. I'll let you know when that comes up so you can support it. Some of my favorite jams. If you guys support, they'll give me more. And then we'll have a little Ozzy's Boneyard, Patreon, podcast. We'll have the whole family set up for you for the fucking winter. I love you motherfuckers. Have a great week. Uh, I hope you're happy. That's all I could wish for. You know what I'm saying? Whatever I discussed last week, I realized that uh, I shouldn't be bringing some of that shit to the podcast. But I have to. I want you guys to know what the fuck is going on with me. What direction I'm fucking swinging. And that's it and that's that. I love you guys with all my heart. Thank you very much. And now for a word from our motherfucking sponsors. Thank you for listening to today's disaster. But no matter what, Uncle Joey's brought, joint is brought to you by Lucy Nicotine Gum. Listen, I smoked for a few years when I got that lane. I did the patch. That kind of sucked. You got a little rash in your fucking arm. I started popping gum. And I'll tell you what, it keeps me together. When you're craving a smoke, you just need a little something to satisfy the habit. Uh, you take a deep breath, you go outside, you look around, say which way the wind blows, and pop one of these Lucy's in your mouth. You're as good as brand new, Jack. It's 2020, things may be rough, but you don't need to smoke anymore. You really don't. And you know what? You're going to give it up for your resolutions. Start right now. So by the time the first comes, you're not fucking smoking no more. I, I got a PhD in fucking Loserville, and I can even tell you this. Get Lucy today so you're prepared for when you get the itch. Lucy gum actually tastes good. It comes in three flavors, wintergreen, cinnamon, and pomegranate. They also got a cherry ice flavored lozen that will fucking make your little asshole blow smoke out of it like fucking you're sending smoke signals to the Indians. What's my favorite flavor? I got to go with fucking the pomegranate. I'm going to try the cherry ice the cherry ice flavored lice, uh, lozenge pretty soon. I want to make a little smoke come out of my ass. So buy a pack of Lucy and keep it on you. When the craving strikes, it might be when you least expect it. Lucy is discreet and you can take it with you anywhere. This is the real deal Mongolia field. A subscription to Lucy comes directly to your door each month. So it's simple and you don't got to leave your house because Lucy has delivery down. Like I said, Lucy's always deliver. Go to Lucy.co and use promo code Joey to get 20% off all products, including the gum or the lozenges. That's Lucy.co. Use promo code Joey at checkout. Also, I got to give you a little disclaimer from the fucking, you know, this product contains nicotine derived from tobacco. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Just go to Lucy.co. And be sure to use the promo code Joey. That's it. And that's that. I'll see you motherfuckers next week. Thank you for a fun-filled week. If you follow me on Patreon, get ready to blow your fucking socks off. T-shirts are coming. I just looked at them today. I'm going to surprise you motherfuckers. I told you January, but you know Uncle Joey, dog. I take care of my fucking family. Patreon, Twitterville, all you cocksuckers get love. Listen, the podcast goes up. I don't know who you voted for, but listen, 
Have a great day. Have a great weekend. Bust out the football helmets in case you get hit in the head with a brick. Love you, cocksuckers. <laughs>